Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, it's the day before Father's Day. Uh, in my house, uh, the kids actually celebrate Father's Day weekend. So I'm up earlier than I want to be. I'm getting things like this handed to me. Okay, hey, sounds good. I'm all for it. Um, let's talk about boxing. Right back from breakfast. It's still too early for me. I'm looking forward to getting back in bed. But let's talk about boxing. The weigh-in for the Andre Ward-Paul Smith fight. Paul Smith comes in four pounds over the weight limit. Folks, this is a joke, right? This this is a bad joke at that. Understand that this fight's going to be televised on BET. Understand that a lot of people are spending a lot of money to travel to watch this fight. Understand Andre Ward just signed a contract with Rock Nation, right? You can imagine Rock Nation is looking forward to this fight. Now, how Paul Smith, with the event riding on him, could pull this passive-aggressive maneuver, right? Tell no one that he's having a weight problem, then show up at the weigh-in and say, you know what, oops, I missed weight by not four ounces, but four pounds. That's just downright absurd. Now, in my opinion, and this is speculation, on my part right in my opinion personally this guy obviously knows that Andre Ward is gonna get inside on him and this guy wants to make sure that he has as many advantages right that he has literally more than four pounds of advantage over Andre Ward right going forward really the people negotiating on behalf of boxers need to build in automatic penalties, right? The fighter who makes weight should have the option of whether he wants to go forward. And if he goes forward, all parties need to know in advance exactly what the penalty is going to be. And quite frankly, two pounds overweight is absolutely outrageous. Four pounds overweight. That's the kind of thing that really should subject you to license suspensions hearings after the fight. Let me say, too, in my opinion, the four pounds aren't going to help Paul Smith. I still like Andre Ward in this fight. In fact, I believe it's going to hurt Paul Smith. If you're going to fight a great fighter, you want to make sure that you're familiar with what you're doing. Right? That your approach doesn't have uncertainty. Paul Smith really hasn't fought this level of opponent at this weight, right? According to reports, Paul Smith wanted the weight limit on the fight to be 170, right? Now he's coming in really above 175. He's coming in above the light heavyweight limit, right? So to me, Paul Smith, during the fight, is going to feel that extra weight at some point. Right? You understand that he's going to try to go all out to knock out Andre Ward. If he doesn't do that, he's going to be in trouble, folks, because he's going to be heavier than normal. He's going to have less stamina than normal. He's not going to be able to move around the ring as well as he has in the past. Simply put, the odds of Paul Smith getting KO'd in my opinion, have just increased exponentially. Let's talk about Sean Porter. Let's talk about Adrian Broner. Sean Porter made the weight. He weighed in at 144. Now understand, the contract apparently has a rehydration clause. Porter now can't gain weight to go to 160. I believe the limit on how much weight he can gain is something like 10 pounds or so. Right? Understand he's made weight. Let's see what happens in the fight. Let's see if there comes a time in the fight where it looks like Sean Porter misses those three pounds. 
right? Uh, this is a bit of uncharted water for Sean Porter. I still like him in the fight, in part because Porter, unlike Paul Smith, has always been the consummate professional, right? Porter agrees to a catch weight. Porter comes in at the catch weight, right? I get the feeling Porter takes care of his body. I've never seen Porter look badly out of shape like I have seen his opponent, Adrian Broner. Right, so I still like Porter in the fight. Just know Porter made 144 and looked relatively good at the weigh-in. Now let's talk about something that shocked me. Right, shocked me. I'm late to the party. This is a situation where you know far more about this than I do. Right, I'm late to the party. I heard about FanDuel. Right. I'm in... A baseball fantasy pool already I thought okay you know what I'm in a fantasy pool um, I bet on baseball um, you know bet on teams both you know season long bets as well as game by game so when I heard about FanDuel these one day fantasy things I thought it was really for casual fans I didn't think it was for people already deep in fantasy baseball pools Right? So I didn't really pay it any mind. Well, let me tell you, I should have. This is a my bad. As I said, I'm late to the party. This is a game changer. This really has changed American sports. Understand, FanDuel is legal. Right? If you're in that murky world of Costa Rican sports books or European sports books and you really don't know whether or not the you know offshore betting is legal in your town or country, um, understand here there's no question. It's my understanding in the United States, and I'll limit my comments to the United States, FanDuel is legal. Right? Um they somehow were able to achieve legality by convincing people that this was really more of a game of chance. You know, that this was more like the lottery than what I believe it really is. Right? This is legalized betting for hardcore gamblers. Let me tell you, you can actually sync FanDuel with your PayPal account. Right? You can actually fund FanDuel using credit cards. Right? You're not going to get a, hey, your credit card was declined because this is an offshore gambling site. You're not going to get anything like that. Right, I've heard that happens. And, uh, you know, you're not going to get that here. Let me say, too, you go to FanDuel. Now, understand, FanDuel has different contests. They have contests you enter where you're going against, you know, 20 people. What intrigues me isn't that part of FanDuel. What intrigues me is the part of FanDuel that allows for head-to-head -head betting. Think about this. By the way, it's head-to-head -head betting against strangers. Right? The fantasy pools I'm a part of, you know, you, you know the people you're with. Here it's head-to-head -head betting against strangers. So I'm on FanDuel and I figure, okay, how much are they betting? Five bucks? Ten bucks? Yeah, they are. But they're also betting $20,000. $50,000, right? Let me just say, that's well over my risk tolerance. And I'm here, you know, pubbing gamblersadvisory.com, right? But let's just say the gambling's big, folks. It's big by Las Vegas standards. Understand, too, that you sign up to play some guy in, let's say, a, you know, $100 game, Okay? At the end of the day, you're either going to win $80, right? They have a big VIG. It's 20%. You're either going to win $80 or you're going to lose the $100, right? Let me say this, too. This subverts the political argument against betting, right? Because you're betting real money here. You're winning real money here. You're losing real money here. The politicians have made this legal. By the way, you're not waiting. All of this happens within a day. 
right? Understand if the rationale for not having in the U.S., because I know they're smarter than us in Europe, but if the rationale for not having online sports books in the U.S. that are legal is that gambling is addictive, and I mean outside the state of Nevada, right? Then someone's going to have to tell me how this site with actual betting is legal, right? Clearly, the gambling is addictive group has lost out on this argument, right? You can't go around saying society is going to go to hell in a handbasket if we have legalized gambling and then allow sites like this where you have legalized gambling where I could decide this morning you know what I'm gonna bet fifty thousand dollars on my head-to-head -head game and I'm gonna have that game against some other total stranger who's putting up his fifty thousand dollars right and the winner is gonna net eighty percent of the fifty Right? So FanDuel is legal. It's big betting. The people arguing that gambling is too addictive to be legal have lost that argument. Right? I believe society has continued on and has done well even with FanDuel in existence. Let me go one step further. You know, historically, there was the concern that if you had legalized gambling, players would be bribed. In other words, if I have $50,000 relying in part on what Alex Rodriguez does in his next game, right? The theory was that I might approach Alex. And I might say, look, player, look, I, you know, I'm not asking you to throw the season. I'm not asking you to do anything other than strike out a few times in this game, right? My $50,000 is riding on just today, not tomorrow, right? Help out a brother today. Right. Well, understand if that's the theory behind making gambling illegal. Well, you have FanDuel, and by the way, you're betting on real players. In other words, your FanDuel team has Alex Rodriguez. Understand, people have figured out that there's so much money in sports that the idea of me getting Alex Rodriguez to throw a game for $50,000 is laughable. Right? I think folks also understand, too, that, you know, superstars don't want to risk their entire career to help some gambler on one game. You know, quite frankly, as a better myself, I'm more worried about the umpires and the referees than I am the professional gamblers, right? Let me uh, also add, too, that the system is completely computerized. In other words... You're building a lineup, right? Pitcher, all the position players. Well, one would wonder, how am I going to keep track of all that info? FanDuel makes it easy for you, right? You're out with your girl at some recital or some, I don't know, uh, Boy Scout or Girl Scout event, and you can just take out your phone and glance at it. They have live scoring. They'll give you the score of your team. They'll give you the score of the team you're playing. Right? Think about that. Let me point out, too, that when you're on FanDuel, you're going to notice that there's no limit on the amount of games you can be in. At least none that I'm aware of right now. Correct me if I'm wrong. So understand, they have some big money games, right? Guys betting $50,000. Then if you look closely, you'll actually notice that the gambling is so heavy that the guy who's playing in $50,000 games might be playing in several of them, right? So he's not betting $50,000 for one day. He's betting 50,000 times, let's say, the four games he's in. He's betting $200,000 for that day, right? If you show up on FanDuel on a daily basis, you're going to notice that the players are repeat players. Folks, they're people feeding their families, right? Making a living on FanDuel. And they're doing it legally, right? So understand this is a game changer. I believe that uh, online sports betting, the legality of it in the United States is going to be cleared up shortly. But certainly the trend 
is unmistakable. You now have people like the NBA commissioner uh, openly saying that he believes that gambling is going to happen, right? And that, you know, the leagues need to work with the online sports books to make sure that the integrity of their games are maintained. Well, all I'm saying is, wow, take a look at FanDuel. Legalized gambling is here already, right? The only difference is instead of picking a team, let's say the Yankees, what you're doing is you're picking players, right? And instead of going against a market price on the game, you're literally matching wits with another contestant in a head-to-head -head matchup. It's a game changer. I don't own any stock in FanDuel. As far as I know, I don't know anyone associated with FanDuel. Uh, I haven't been asked by anyone to make this video, but understand as someone who talks about sports betting here online, it's my obligation to report game changers like this. And let me just say this is a game changer. I hope you give it a look. Thanks for stopping by.